Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Baijus Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really great well this this entire weekend. We're going to be kickstarting and looking at the first part of history of British literature. I will also be recommending two very easy books uh, during the course of this entire lecture that you can actually refer to for just clarifying your basic concepts, getting the bird's eye view and proper perspective. Because a lot of you also write that you know there are problems that you basically face, identifying which resources you could actually consult to get those basic. Fundas cleared. So, without further ado, let's just very quickly dive into today's session. Good morning, everybody. I can see Rupesh. Rupesh is always the first person. Be this seven a.m. lecture, whatever you 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 want to see. Mostly Dilal, Rupesh. They're always bang on time. Uh, so, I really really appreciate that. Right? Uh, wow. So, there's Rupesh. There's Sita. Uh, there's Sitapa. There's No Nolit. Oh God. Wow. Good morning, good morning. There's Nikumoni, there's Semina, there's Avtara, Komal, Semina, Satya. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, without further ado, I think let's just very quickly get started. Uh, we will be looking at we will be what is the agenda for today's session. Today we'll be, of course, looking at a quick history uh, overview of the monarchs uh, who are coming in. Right, all the monarchs who are coming in. We will be placing their history in a proper light, in a proper format altogether. After looking at the history of the monarchs, just give me one second. Just give me one second. Uh, Right. So after looking at the history of the monarchs, that is where we'll be we'll be launching into. Uh, in the second part, we'll be covering step by step all the important aspects in your British history, literary history, which are important. What kind of questions come? But today's part is primarily focusing on monarchical history. Right. We are we are basically focusing on the history of the monarch. That is something which is really important for all of us. Right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. So without further ado, I think let's just very very quickly get started. Let's just very very quickly um, kick start. This Just a second. Yeah. All right. This I think is perfect. All right. So, like I said, today's agenda will be to look at the history of monarchs. That is something that we'll be focusing on. But before that, we are having ten important icebreaking questions. Okay. These are the icebreaker questions, and all these icebreaker questions are fresh questions. They're new questions, not the questions that we've been practicing. So, we've got a few fresh icebreaker questions for all of you. I think barring one or two questions, all of them will be primarily fresh for all of you. Uh, so, there are ten ice. Breaking question followed by then we will be moving on to a brief history of your monarchs. That is also the first important thing to place British history. It is imperative for all of us to know about the monarchical history as well. So without further ado, let's just very quickly get started. I will be sharing a couple of things this week regularly. All right, on the Telegram platform that's Nisha English UGC Net. So please feel free to stay connected uh, with us. I'll also share. Uh, there will be okay. So on Monday as well. Well, as on Sunday at 10:30 p.m., you have your mock net. Right, you are having your mock net on Monday and Sunday at 10:30 p.m. on the Bijou's Exam Prep Net application platform. Uh, please make sure I will share the link on the Telegram platform as well. Uh, please make sure that you prep well. You come down. Uh, there'll be 50 fresh questions that we will be practicing on both the days, Monday as well as on uh, on Sunday. Uh, this is at 10:30 p.m. So please block your calendars accordingly. Make sure that you're all available. Uh, that is going to be a priority. Okay. All right. So without further ado. I think let's just very quickly get started with today's session. Like I said, today is the first part that we are looking at. This is a brief history module. Uh, in the second and the third part, you'll have three or uh, two more parts coming. In the second part, I will walk you through all the ages and all the important details in every age. And in the third part, we will practice questions related to history of English literature, which will also be helpful for a couple of entrances like your uh, UP PGT exams or other exams where history of English literature. Questions are coming in. They are very scoring. They are absolutely scoring. All of you should prioritize these questions because they are important for all of you. All right. Okay. So without further ado, I think let's just very very quickly get started with today's lecture. Let's just very quickly get started with ten ice breaking questions. Um, and of course, please, in case if you need any support from our end, we are looking at the score boost batch sessions. We meet regularly twice, uh, in order to ensure that you are you are reviewing your content. There will be practice sessions as well added to. 
these sessions. So in case if you require any structured support in your preparation, please feel free to log in to the Score Booster batch. Uh, we'd be more than happy to uh, help you and aid you in your preparation journey. All right, this is the first question. The force of poetry is written by these are quick ice breaking questions. The force of poetry is written by who's the writer who's writing the force of poetry? Who's the writer who's written the force of poetry? Let's just see how many of you are able to get the right answer. The force of poetry. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So where are we able to see the force of poetry? Okay, people have started answering already. That's great. That's great. I can see in the chat box, the answers have already started coming in. It is Christopher Ricks. It is Chris Christopher Ricks. That is the right answer. I saw Nature as Beauty answering it for the very first time. The Force of Beauty is a 1984 book that is written by Christopher Ricks. It is a compilation of articles that were published by the author in 1960s and 80s. So from 1960s all the way till 1980s all the articles that the author was writing that Christopher Ricks was writing he's compiling it in book form as a force of poetry which is coming out in 1984 it is coming out in 1984 1984 is when we are able to see that this particular book is coming across uh, you know it is having articles on poets like John Gower uh, John Milton Samuel Johnson Geoffrey Hill Stevie Smith you can remember that Stevie Smith Geoffrey Hill all of these people are being mentioned. Geoffrey Hill, Stevie Smith, Stevie Smith, Johnson, right? There are there are essays on Gower, Johnson, Dr. Samuel Johnson. So this particular, uh, the force of poetry is having Gower, Milton, Samuel Johnson, right? Ga John Gower is also mentioned over here. Milton is also mentioned. All these poets are being mentioned. So all the essays that Christopher Ricks was writing from 1960s to 80s, they're getting published in the force of poetry in the book form in 1984. Please remember that, okay? This is uh, an important uh, question that comes in. The term pi Island Poets is coming from 20th century drama and 20th century poetry. Both of these have to be covered in greater detail. Make notes via referring to online resources if possible, right? But you will have to collaborate and make notes, right? 20th century poetry and 20th century drama, right? So these are important. Island Poets, where is the terminology coming in from? Let's see how many of you are able to get the, <clears throat> the icebreaker question correctly. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes, absolutely right. Stephen Spender's the right answer. Pylon poets were a group of British poets in the 1930s, also called the Auden Group, also called the Left Wing Poets, also called the Max Fonde Group of Poets, also called the uh, poets who were trying to talk about working class concerns, right? And we are able to see that they are using industrial imagery. What is it that they are using? They are using industrial imagery. That is another thing that we are able to see that the imagery that they are using is actually industrial imagery they are using industrial imagery basically and uh, the group is actually coming from the term the pylons the pylons was a name that was uh, being written right pylons was the name that was being written that was being used by stephen spender so 20th century drama 20th century poetry if you've not made notes already make concise notes right away that will be an investment of time and, and you'll see a lot of questions getting replicated here uh, in 2006, post-apocalyptic novel by the American writer Corman McCarthy details a father and his son's grueling journey through America burned to dust by an unspecified cataclysm that has destroyed industrial civilization and almost all life. Which is this the post-apocalyptic novel? Post-apocalyptic novel that we're talking about. Which is this post-apocalyptic novel that we're discussing? What is the correct answer here? <clears throat> Sorry. Yes, Tamina, very good. That is right. They are also called Ordnung Group of Poets. What is this work that we're talking about? It's a post-apocalyptic novel that we're to talking about. You can add it. So when you go back to now your Rotelage, you can add a sticky note to your post-modern uh, writings, to your, uh, you know, to your post-modern British literature. You can append this keynote, right? You can put this keynote along. So what is the right answer here? The road is absolutely the right answer. Chandani answered it. Aftara answered it. Uh, before that, Tehmina answered it. Kuhu answered it correctly. Very good. Very good. Absolutely right. And then everybody 
everybody is answering it amrapali um, najma khatun uh, shatabdi everybody shatabdi banshi everybody now is answering it correctly yes 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 no avismai it is a road that we are talking about right it is a road that we are talking about it's a 2006 post apocalyptic novel by corman mccarthy and what is this telling you this is telling you about the journey of a father and the son over a period of several months in a landscape that is blasted by an unspecified cataclysm right which is destroying industrialization this work is important now you will ask why this question came in right why how do we identify what kind of works are coming in this book was awarded the 2007 pulitzer prize for fiction it was the recipient of the 2007 pulitzer prize for fiction so that is the reason this work is becoming important because it is receiving the pulitzer prize right it is getting the pulitzer prize it is getting the pulitzer prize in 2007 it is also receiving the tate uh, black memorial prize for fiction in 2006 itself tate black memorial prize for fiction so please remember that corman mccarthy the road post apocalyptic novel destruction of the industrial world destruction of the world itself the destruction of the world itself that is being spoken about now we all know about bunyan's pilgrim's progress being an allegory we all must have studied christian we all must have studied the second part about christina we all must be knowing how vanity fair is coming from uh, the the title vanity fair of uh, thackeray is coming from bunyan's pilgrim's progress we may know other details like life and times of michael K so life and times of michael case of course by kozy but uh, uh, when we are looking at uh, life and death of mr badman or when we are looking at the other works like grace the bounding by pilgrim's progress a writer that is bunyan but what about pilgrim's regress who is the writer who has written pilgrim's regress this is the next question who is the writer who is writing pilgrim's regress pilgrim's regress which is a book that is coming it is an allegorical fictional book who is the writer of pilgrim's regress who is the person who is writing that oh tamina said like, uh, is it shatabdi is the name of a uh, of a movie star I was not aware about it. Yes, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Tamina has got it right as well as uh, Abantika Chakravarti got it right. Abantika was the first one to get it right. Very good, Abantika. The Pilgrim's Regress. It's an allegorical work by C. S. Lewis. It's uh, this is a 1933 novel. Uh, we are able to see that you know uh, Lewis was publishing this work. 1933 novel was the first published work of prose fiction by Lewis. And what we are able to see is it's telling you about the progress of a fictional character called John. right so there is this character called john and his entire progress is presented through philosophical landscape he is actually searching for the island of his desire what is he searching for he is john is searching for the island of his desire island of his desire his search is for the island of his desire he is searching for the island of his desire altogether and we are able to see that you know john is of course at the epicenter the character is struggling he is struggling with uh, modern hypocrisy with uh, with intellectual vacancy of the christian church uh, communism fascism uh philosophical movement so he's he's literally struggling with all of that he's literally struggling with all of that right so that is another pointer that you're able to look at yes very good very good very good yes badal sarkar is also starting shatabdi so please remember that please keep this aspect in mind let's move on to another question we all know about nobel prize winning writers we know that the english person the first english person to get the nobel prize was rudyard kipling but what about who's the first woman to get the nobel prize who's the first woman who is getting the nobel prize for literature right who is the first woman who is getting it for literature the first uh, nobel prize for wo uh, first woman getting the nobel prize similarly the first american to get the nobel prize similarly the first uh, australian to get the nobel prize these categories also have to be cleared the first african to get the nobel prize in your net exam these kind of questions have come in your net exam these kind of questions are constantly being asked as well so you should know about them what is the right answer here everybody absolutely right absolutely right yes 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 uh, so most of you are answering it some of you are not able to simran just write it down bachi uh, for the youtube sessions just write it down that will be a good habit for you okay uh, so here please keep that in mind that when we are looking at when we are talking about uh, so most of you are absolutely right most of you are absolutely 
एब्सोल्युटली राइट प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस दैट लुइसिया लुइसिया इज कमिंग इन राइट लुइसिया इज कमिंग इन एंड शी इज बिकमिंग द फर्स्ट वुमन टू एक्चुअली कम एंड रिसीव राइट कम एंड रिसीव दिस इंटायर अक्लेम दिस इंटायर respect so to say uh, in terms of when when you are looking at receiving uh, being the first woman of sorts to get the the nobel prize but always remember categories really help you a lot right categories really help you a lot here most of you have got it bang on right uh, that you know how you are able to see that selma uh, selma lagerlof uh, remember you had you had your uh, you had uh, selma lagerlof's chapter as well in your uh, in your ncrt books if you can recollect right so she's a swedish writer uh, she is uh, she she is publishing her first work very early at the age one second i'll just pick up a time it's starting to refresh we'll pick up time later yeah so she's she's getting the nobel prize in literature for the appreciation she was the first woman actually right she's the first woman uh, that uh, who's who's a, who's able to achieve this this entire fate right the first woman to be granted membership in the swedish academy as well and she is also the first woman to win the nobel prize in literature which she was awarded in 1909 So Selma Lagerlöf in 1909 is setting an example, right? Selma Lagerlöf is setting an example for all of us and becoming the first woman to actually. So this is Selma Lagerlöf that we are talking about in 1909, the first member to be entering the Swedish Academy as well as well as the first woman to get the Nobel Prize. So Selma Lagerlöf, Selma Lagerlöf. We actually had she is a Swedish writer. Next time you can get a question on the origins of Selma Lagerlöf as well. So you should know that she is a Swedish writer that we are. talking about right she is a swedish writer over here be very clear about that as well okay so selma lagerlof is the right answer here which of the following schools of literary criticism does not focus on how one group is oppressed by the other all the other major groups except one of these is actually fighting against a mainstream center and that mainstream center is a center of oppression that mainstream center is a center of oppression for instance feminism is fighting against what it is fighting against the the center of oppression Oppressed patriarchy. Patriarchy is oppressing. So, which is not? Which is not? <clears throat> Formalism is the right answer. Very good, Aftara, Shikha. Everybody has answered it correctly. Marxism is fighting again uh, with the with the industrial powerful haves. Postcolonialism is actually a fight of the subaltern. Fight of the subaltern against the white narratives. Against the white narratives that we are able to see. Whereas formalism is not oppression. Formalism is just saying that you know we need to look at the text per se. We need to look at the text per se. That is the only thing that formalism is actually telling us about, right? That's the only thing that formalism actually discusses. That is what you are able to see. So feminism is trying to tell you that you know women were mistreated. Marxism is telling you about how labor productivity completely made it detrimental for the laborers altogether. Post-colonialism is also a critique, proper critique that we are able to see against the white Puritan hegemony. Formalism is not really oppressed. Is not something which is fighting against oppression per se. Okay, a really important short story that is being written by this writer. You have to identify this writer. Who is the author of Indian Camp? Please start taking your short stories also very seriously. Net gives you questions on short stories from popular writers. From popular writers whom we only consider as novelists, we are not considering them uh, as as you know writers of fiction. Net is actually usually giving us those kind of questions. Remember that, right? You you basically getting those kind of questions coming in. What is the right answer here? Oh wow, your tab is there. That's really nice. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. D is absolutely the right answer. Ernest Hemingway is the short story. Uh, he's the person who's written the short story, The Indian Camp. The Indian Camp is a short story that Ernest Hemingway, the writer who's associated with the iceberg technique, is writing. That uh, you know, Hemi, uh, Hemingway is uh, Hemingway has created this semi-autobiographical character called Nick Adams. 
he is a child in the story and he makes his first appearance in indian camp only because you know indian camp is told from the perspective of the child nick adams this is told from the point of view point of view of nick adams remember even in the morning class at 7 am as a part of the score booster batch this is what we were discussing that your criticism has three major aspects and narratology is one of them right and when we talk about narratology narratology actually discusses point of views this is a child's point of view that we are able to see nick adams is coming for the very first time here and indian camp was actually uh, you know uh, it 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 was it was getting published as indian camp it got a lot of praise as well according to ford madox ford indian camp is actually a very important early story by a young writer an important early story by a young writer that is a praise that ford madox ford was giving ford madox ford was giving this particular praise to the writer you can keep that aspect also in mind okay we all know the writings of mulkaraj anand but there is this one writing whose title is suggested by a british writer who is this writer the title for the book the sword and the sickle was given to mulkaraj anand by who is the writer who is giving the title the sword and the sickle who is the writer <coughs> sorry the title of the book the sword and the sickle was given to mulkaraj anand by who is the writer who is giving this particular title what is the right answer here everybody what becomes the right answer the title for the book the sword and the sickle was given by excellent roots and legacies has answered it correctly very good roots and legacies roots and legacies becomes the first person to answer it uh, oh god where is this gone just a second i'm not able to see your answers roots and legacies is bang on right uh, when when you are talking about george orwell so george orwell was the person who actually helped right so in a way the sword and the sickle is a novel by mulkaraj anand when is it coming 1942 when is this work coming this work is coming in 1942 in the year 1942 you are able to see that this particular work is coming and like the other novels this novel is also dealing with the topic of social and political structure it is telling you about social and political structures it is telling you about the rise of communism altogether that is what is being discussed over here you know the book was actually a part of a trilogy the village across the black waters the village across the black waters across the black waters the village across the black waters right across the black waters the village the village these were all the writings these were all the writings that you were able to see uh, these were all the writings that were so this was these were the two important aspects and this was the trilogy these three the sword and the sickle the village across the black waters these are a part of the trilogy altogether right and the title was actually given to anand by george orwell this particular title that we are able to see this is something which is coming from george orwell right moving on to another question about a novel which was very recently published a lot of times you see these questions on recent writings as well who wrote a famous novel which was published in 2021 which tells the story of a solar powered artificial friend artificial friend i wish we can all have that right because human friends are just going to be untrustworthy uh, who is chosen by josie a sickly child to be her companion and you know you also had badshah's song so the punjabi star he also uh, written a very similar song on similar lines all together so what is the right answer here what is the right answer here let's see how many of you are able to get the right answer here Yes, yes, yes. Ishiguro is the right answer. Kiara and the Sun is the eighth novel, which uh, which is being written, right? Which is being written by uh, Ishiguro. Ishiguro is a Nobel Prize winning writer, by the way. Uh, he is a British writer as well. And this novel is uh, published on second March two thousand and twenty one. It is a dystopian science fiction story. What kind of a what kind of a, uh, a story it is? It is dystopian. It is dystopian sci fi. right it's dystopian sci-fi trying to tell you that you know how in the world of technology the human bond the the condition is going to be coming even wor more worse so it is set in us at an unspecified future and the book is actually told from the point of view of kiera kiera and the sun kiera and the sun so kiera is uh, you know kiera it's 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 being 
told to you from the perspective of Kiera. Kiera is the perspective that is being taken away. Kiera is a solar powered artificial friend. Solar powered artificial friend who is chosen by Josie. Josie is the, the sickly uh, person that we are talking about. right? Josie is the sickly person that the question is also mentioning. So Josie is selecting Kiera. So Kiera and the sun because she is a solar powered. She is a solar. Kiera, that's the name of the work. Kiera and the sun. Kiera and the sun. And we are able to see Kiera is the solar powered. The solar powered artificial friend that we are able to see. You know, the book is also told from the perspective of Kiera. The book is also told from the perspective of Kiera. So, point of view is also of Kiera, right? So, please remember that and it is set in US. The setting is in US at an unspecified time in the future, obviously. All right, uh, moving on to another work which is fairly recent, not very recent, but 30 to 40 years old, 30 years old. The novel centers on a housewife who becomes a stay-at-home mother and later suffers from depression. So you're able to see that this work is coming in 1982, but not a lot of things have actually changed. It focuses on the everyday sexism, the title character experiences from childhood to her marriage. Right, a lot of novels actually talk about it. A lot of movies have captured it. Remember Sri Devi's English English, where her husband is making fun of her that okay, you know, she she was born to produce laddus, and she feels like a sort of an insult that you know why is he only saying that I've I've been born to uh, produce laddus? So the the sexism, the inherent sexism that women have to face on a regular basis, that is something which is being covered over here, right? Okay, what is the right answer here, everybody? What becomes the right answer? Excellent. D is the right answer. D is absolutely the right answer here. Please keep that in mind. So this is Kim Ji Young, born 1982. This is a novel by Cho Nam Jo. Cho Nam Jo is writing it. Cho Nam Jo. Cho Nam Jo is the writer. Cho Nam Jo is the writer over here, which is coming in 1982. Uh, Kim John, uh, Kim, uh, Kim Ji Young, uh, born 1982. You know, it is actually trying to tell you about a lived experience. It is novelization of a lived experience by everyday ordinary Korean woman. So it's, a, it's capturing the life of the everyday ordinary. This is the very ordinary lived experience of an ordinary Korean woman. Ordinary Korean woman. I remember even uh, during my stint at MDI Gurgaon, uh, where we were also taking care of the Korean cohort batch. I remember that, you know, while, while dealing with Korean students, they said that now things are changing because otherwise, you know, our mothers would always tell you, uh, tell us that how would you take care of your child? You need to be available for your child altogether. Yes, absolutely, Shikha. So when you talk about, when you talk about yellow wallpapers, what are you able to see that yellow wallpaper, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, 100 years ago, things haven't really changed. The everyday sexism that women have to face, the everyday comments that women have to face that they're not really up to the mark altogether, right? So that is another thing that you're able to see. You know, Cho took two months to write the story according to uh, Cho herself. Uh, but please remember that uh, that you, you are able to see that Kim Ji Yong, the character who's coming in Kim Ji Yong, born 1982, uh, you, you're able to see that th there is a there's a novelization of how every Korean woman was undergoing struggles on a regular basis, which was not actually something that that uh, Cho Nam Jo had experienced, but she was talking about this, right? She was discussing about this at length, right? She was discussing uh, uh, about this at length. Next question is a repetition. We've actually done this question multiple times. So I want everybody to answer it. So please remember this as well. Okay, Kiara and the Sun by Ishiguru telling you about the artificial friend. Kiara and <coughs> sorry, Kiara and, and friend telling you about the artificial friend. And here, Kim Ji Yong, born 1982, by Chao Nam Jo, telling you about ordinary Korean woman. It's a novelization of lived experience. What is this work? This is actually a novelization, novelization of lived experience, of lived experience. Right. So this is what the work is actually doing. OK, Max Fonde group was a name invented by somebody in 1946 to talk about these four poets, the Oxford group of poets that we were talking about. Pilon poets, that's what uh, the question at the beginning that was asked. What is the right answer here, everybody? This is like a really simple question and I want all of you to answer it correctly. All right. And after this, we'll do one more question. Then we'll start with a quick uh, overview of, uh, you know, your monarchical history, so to say. <clears throat>
Right. Roy Campbell is the right answer. Some of you are mentioning Steiner. It's actually Roy Campbell. So the Auden group or the Auden generation, these are a group of British writers, Irish writers who were very active, like W.H. Auden, Louis McNeese, Cecil Day Lewis, Stephen Spender, uh, Christopher Isherwood. And they were called the poets of the 30s or they were called the Max Ponde group. Roy Campbell was actually writing Talking Bronco. Talking Bronco. He was writing Talking Bronco. You can write this thing down as well. Because this question has also come in Talking Bronco, in Talking Bronco 1946. This is a work that he is writing where he is giving us the term of Max Ponde group of poets, where he is giving us the term of Max Ponde group of poets. He is telling you that there are four po uh, poets. So Louis McNeese, Louis McNeese, Louis McNeese is the Mac. Right. Louis McNeese is actually the Mac that you're able to see. Stephen Spender. Stephen Spender is the spur. Stephen Spender is actually the spur that you're able to see. W.H. Auden. W.H. Auden. Right. So this this is actually W.H. Auden. So this is actually Auden's uh, one that you've actually taken. And the last is Cecil Day Lewis. So Day. <clears throat> Cecil Day Lewis. So that is a Max Ponde group of poets that we're talking, uh, uh, telling you about. And in Talking Bronco, he talks about this classification. Let's just do one more question. That is also an easy question. So here, Roy Campbell. Here, Roy Campbell is the right answer. Let's just do one more question. This is a very simple question. How many children had Lady Macbeth? How many children had Lady Macbeth? How many children had Lady Macbeth? <coughs> what is the right answer here, everybody? How many children did Lady Macbeth? How many children had Lady Macbeth? <coughs> Sorry. Yes, absolutely right. Absolutely right. That is the right answer. Uh, that is the right answer here. Knights is the right answer. I think the first one of the first people was Roots and Legacies to answer it correctly. How many children had Lady Macbeth? An essay on theory and practice of Shakespearean criticism. That's the subtitle. An essay in the theory and practice of Shakespearean criticism. This was written by L.C. Knight. That is Lin uh, Lenal Charles Knight that we are able to see. Uh, and, you know, he's telling you it's coming out in 19, uh, 1933. Uh, uh, it is trying to make a mockery of the approach that was used, right? Uh, or when we talk about Shakespearean criticism, that is something which it's making a mockery of, right? So please be very carefully aware about it. Okay, let's quickly pause over here. We'll, we'll do more icebreaking questions, but you know, just to cover a little bit, I also want you to gather. We've already discussed this, by the way. We've already discussed this, by the way. But when we talk about a brief history, there are two books that you can actually leverage. There are two books that you can use. One can be your Hudson. Hudson can be a really good book, right? Uh, the other book that you have, I'll just show you. It's a black colored book. I will I will show you the book as well. Uh, give me time towards the end of the session. I'll, I'll probably show you both the books that you can actually use uh, for reviewing for it's a very thin book of 40 pages itself that uh, it'll be a quick reminder for all of you to revise especially a lot of you ask from where to start that question will at least be sorted okay now understand this when we talk about the history of, uh, of uh, english lit literature there is of course the coming of the 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 so-called invasions that are coming like the roman invasions are coming then you have the anglo-saxons then you have the anglo-normans then you're able to see war that is taking place so when we are looking at british history this is something that we have talked about right this is something that we've been looking at so whenever we look at the the literary history we are able to see that the sociological history has to be uh, more classified in greater detail we need to understand that there is not uh, much that is written on this particular page but you have to understand you'll have to keep this in mind that you know the, the british history is actually also the history of the english people it is also the history of the british people that you're able to see that is something which is important for you to re remember now when we look at the historical approach of looking at British history, we are able to see that the first important bit that comes is the Old English period or the Anglo-Saxon period, right? We'll just be talking about all the monarchs. We'll just be talking about all the monarchs. We've already discussed this, but we're just quickly revising it in the first part. Post that, you are able to see that the Middle English period is coming. This is the Anglo-Norman period and this is the age of Chaucer. This is the age of Chaucer. So, 
who are the writers that we have to focus on from the net examination perspective here we have to know about the anglo saxon elegies that are coming in here we have to know about uh, the romances that are coming in like brute and beowulf here we have to know about uh, you know how we are able to see chronicle writings are emerging christian writings are emerging christian christian works are also emerging during this particular period during the anglo norman period you have your alliterative verses being written you have your writings that are coming uh, during the anglo norman period also in the old english period versili book novel codex the manuscripts that are preserving the text they are also becoming important altogether right so when we are able to see that this is the kind of periodization that that we are able to look at then we have the period of renaissance renaissance period is a huge period elizabethan age jacobian age carolin period commonwealth period or the puritan interregnum this is also called the puritan interregnum right this is the puritan interregnum that we are able to see the puritan interregnum that is coming in right there is also the new classical period there is also the new classical period that we are talking about there is also the new classical period that is coming in so what you have to basically do is take it in chunks when you're preparing for the exam just for instance today you focused on old english literature tomorrow you focus on anglo norman literature day after you can focus on renaissance entirely leaving shakespeare out leaving shakespeare out that is what you can actually do right so you have to adopt a proper strategy new classical period the restoration age is the precursor the starting point of the new classical age then it is followed by the age of alexander pope the age of sensibility is also coming in right then you have the romantic period romantic period is where your detailed questions get started up until here the basic overview questions are coming in but the most important detailed questions reference to uh, context questions are also coming from the romantic period then you have the victorian age the victorian age classification many books say it 1837 that is okay literature is a very porous category it is for us to understand if they give you a question when did queen victoria ascend the crown then you can write down 1837 if they ask you when is the first reform bill coming in then you can write down 1832 so based on what will be asked by in the question you will have to accordingly answer that so this is a periodization that we are able to see the modern period divided into edwardian age georgian period that is a division that is taking place on ig i will start uh, helping most of you uh, come live with some of the important topics here because some of you have written that you know there are doubts in certain areas we will discuss that then you have the post modern period then you are having the post modern period that is coming in post modern period where we discussed a couple of questions today the ice breaking questions a lot of questions ishiguru for instance uh, a lot of questions were actually coming from the post modern period itself now when we are looking at writings like the old english period writings what all kind of writings what all kinds of literatures are we able to see you can put it in the chat box as well you can take the support of the chat box and help me uh, understand that you know what kind of writings are coming christian elegies uh, elegies are being written anglo saxon elegies are very important right you are able to see that christianization or the process of christianization is starting all together right the anglo saxon chronicle is also coming during this period the wolf is coming during this period that is another thing that you are able to see kenning is being used right kenning is being used so what what all things are we able to notice we are able to notice kenning kenning we'll just talk about all of these your romances are coming your kenning is coming your elegies are being written christianization right christianization whenever you study a particular age create a map for yourself first create a map take bigger notebook so what you can actually study see how you're supposed to be studying you have to make a bigger notebook or you can take a smaller notebook as well right in the bigger notebooks what you can do is so like you know this is going to be a comparatively bigger notebook in a bigger notebook you can just create like you know these mind maps so to say on one particular sheet in comparison to say a smaller notebook where you're trying to compile all the pointers right in comparison to a smaller notepad notebook that you are having where you can write down the final pointers where you can you can actually then write down the the final pointers that are coming in so you will have to strategize and you will have to create proper understanding as to how you are taking so create i i would suggest you know definitely have these log books these bigger sheets a3 size sheets a3 size sheets are really important right a3 size size sheets are going to be very very important that that really helps overall 
right so please keep that aspect create these kind of charts first and then you can take it forward so what we are able to see over here is that there is christianization that is taking place christian writings are emerging you are able to see that that the the jute angles and the saxons are coming in jute angles saxons are coming in all these books like rotelage uh, your rd trivedi your orient black swan these are good reliable books that you can refer to pramod ke nayars also uh, the book that is there these are the books that you can refer to to read read it and read it from two to three sources at least right uh, stick to one book that is see you will have to stick to one book but while comparing for instance if you are reading anglo saxon try to read it from two to three books why so that there is a revision there is a recall that takes place understand this strategy as well so while i will only refer to my one book itself but at the same time while i'm covering for instance today if i'm covering anglo saxon literature i will refer i would have read anglo saxon literature from four books or three books at least because it helps me in my revision right and i over here i'm i'm trying to talk about a student over here right uh, alfred the great he is coming in and we are able to see that the anglo saxon chronicle is getting compiled the anglo saxon chronicle is getting uh, compiled all together very nice very nice bibu prava bibu prava is also very regular nice Beowulf is an early epic that we are having. Wanderer, seafarer, husband's message, wife's lament. Remember, we said domestic writings. These uh, works with domestic themes are also emerging during this period. And the Anglo-Saxon chronicle, it is actually an early example of prose writings. An early example of prose writings. That is a diversity of works that we are able to see. right that is something that we have to keep in mind women are treated in a very respectful manner there are adventures there are adventures that we are able to see kenning is taking place kenning whale road instead of saying sea right soul destroyer instead of saying monster so you're joining two words to talk about one word you're joining two words together in order to talk about one word mons uh, kenning the process kennings are very very popular kennings are very very popular over here please remember that kenning is something which is really very very popular here right this is something which is important middle english period create a mind map what is happening during the middle english period which is so transformatory or what is it that we are able to see that is taking place in the middle english period so middle english period is actually starting of the dark ages uh, we are able to see that but remember but remember your magna carta the the charter 1215 is coming in which is limiting the power of the monarchs which is limiting the power of the monarchs so to say right you are able to see that that caxton's printing press there is a move towards going towards renaissance also which is coming during the middle english period so middle english period also called the anglo norman period middle english period which is also being referred to as the anglo norman period that is coming in right the anglo norman period the anglo norman period french is becoming a major language that is being used because this is the language of the new ruling class right it is the language of the new ruling class you are able to see that the english parliament is established you are able to see the magna carta which is being passed on 15th june right almost like uh, we, we we are sitting on 18th june right we are sitting on 18th june today 18th june 2022 but this was the 15th june that we are talking about right the magna carta is coming in the black death is there william caxton's printing press is also coming in but renaissance is starting renaissance is starting with the fall of constantinople you are able to see that this is the birth of the renaissance movement so the seeds of modernism the seeds of modernism are actually there when we are looking at the norman age when we are looking at the middle english period there are there are discoveries that are taking place there are discoveries that are taking place copernicus is also coming in there are proper discoveries that we are able to see over here that are coming in right so always remember this always keep this aspect in mind drama is also becoming really popular uh, drama is uh, there, there's a birth of drama the origin of drama is also starting over here in mystery morality plays all together the interludes all together that is what you are able to see so development of drama development of writing that is another major development that is coming in so seeds of literary development are clearly there 
so whenever we are basically looking at whenever we are talking about uh, the the so called history of english literature it is also important to take it periodically the chart that we saw anglo uh, uh, anglo saxon anglo norman renaissance then your enlightenment period altogether because that way things become a lot more clearer that way things become a lot more decluttered clearer altogether it is better to advance your understanding via that method now if we have to if we have to understand who are the monarchs who are coming we will have to create a a sort of a chart in order to understand or a table will also do we should know uh, that you know what which all works are coming in for instance if we look at okay for instance if we are looking at uh, this example itself let's just let's just take another uh, example over here so edward the 3 is the monarch he is ruling from 1327 to 1377 Langland is born. Langland is born thirteen thirty two, right? There's the beginning of your hundred years war. Chaucer is born eight years later after Langland. There is a Battle of Cressy. Battle of Cressy thirteen forty six. The Black Death is also coming in. Battle of the Polsteers. Richard the Second's reign is also starting. Remember, Edward the Three, Richard the Second. These are the monarchs. Wycliffe's Bible is coming in thirteen eighty. Wat Tyler's rebellion is coming in 1381, right? Uh, so you you need to know certain important time chronology uh, aspects altogether. How you are able to see that Henry the Seventh is coming, starting the Tudor dynasty. The Tudor dynasty is started. Then his son comes in. Then we are able to see that you know Henry the Eighth son is coming, ruling for a brief period. Bloody Mary is coming. but finally it is the reign of queen elizabeth which is starting finally it is the reign of queen elizabeth which is starting all together right so always remember always remember whenever we are looking at so all your monarchs are also falling in this particular uh, domain itself you have your norman kings you are having your norman kings who are coming you are having your plantagenet kings who are coming right you are having the house of lancaster kings you, who are coming house of york tudor uh, kings who are coming the stuart dynasty is coming after that the house of hanover is also coming let's just do it till the house of hanover very very quickly so uh, these are of course works that are coming the norman the norman kings these are the norman kings william the 1st william the 2nd henry the 1st stephen do we have to remember them no just remember have a brief idea have a brief idea but you don't have to mug up all of these the plantagenet kings these are the plantagenet kings henry the second of anjou richard the first john henry the third edward the first edward the second remember all of these are being spoken about by your elizabethan historical play writers in your elizabethan age all your history plays that are coming in all your history plays are coming from here itself Edward the three, Richard the second. These are all the Plantagenet kings. The categories that we are having. You also have the House of Lancaster. You are also having the House of Lancaster, which is coming in. Henry the fourth, fifth, sixth. Again, being spoken by Shakespeare in the history plays. So Shakespeare's history plays. You can go back home today itself. That is your homework, and take a look at Shakespearean history plays. Right? Shakespearean history plays. Just take a look at them. Just have a take a look at them altogether. There is a House of York. There is a House of York that we are having. Edward the fourth, Edward the fifth, Richard the third. The House of York that we are talking about. Right, the House of York that we are talking about. So, House of York is coming in. That is where these monarchs are coming. The Tudor dynasty is finally getting established, where Elizabeth is the last Tudor monarch, and Henry the Eighth is a person. But this is largely a stable uh, period, except for Bloody Mary's reign. Largely a stable period. Largely a stable uh, period that we are able to see that is coming in. Right. Also, what we are able to look at. Also, what we are able to look at is, ah, uh, Bibo Priya. You know, with Truman and all, what happens is that, ah, uh, you cannot actually cite. For instance, if in net exam they give you a, ah, uh, you know, a date which is not matching with Truman, you cannot actually ah uh, take Truman as a verifying source. So it is ideally better that if you are if you are trusting some things which can be quoted as a source, like in Oxford or a Rotledge. So go in for these works also, along with your Truman etc. Go in for these works also because a lot of times in your past books dates might not be correct, and you cannot see, you cannot tell your net committee that hey, but this was the date which was mentioned over there. So you will have to be very authentic over here. So authentication really helps. Stuart dynasty, James the first, James the uh, Charles the first. 
Then you have Charles II, James, William, and Anne. So the, this is the Stuart dynasty, which is again one of the longest stable period, almost stable, except for, of course, not almost, but the second part is almost stable. But we are able to see in the first part, there is a lot of, there is a lot of challenge. There are a lot of challenges that are being faced. Right, there are a lot of these challenges that are coming in, and finally the House of Hanover is coming in. Right, finally the House of Hanover, which is coming in, which which actually still survives. So knowing about monarchy, knowing about the various kings who are coming in, is also really critically important. For instance, we talk about the Georgian period, we talk about the Edwardian period, we are talking about the uh, the 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 Jacobian period, or we are talking about the Elizabethan age, the Victorian period. So knowledge about the monarchs are also it's it's also equally important. Right. So always keep that in mind. Always remember that that whenever we are looking at, whenever we are talking about uh, a proper overall understanding, a proper overall understanding of British history, the first starting point is also looking at the monarchs, looking at the history that is taking place. Paul Poplowski does a really good work, but you know, with the paucity of time, you should actually rely at crisper sources. I think if I get up to show you tomorrow's lecture, maybe I can show you the two books that you can refer to. Uh, they'll really be helpful in developing a fundamental understanding of English literature. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll pause over here. But what I want you all to do is I want you to take a quick look at the British history ones, uh, which I book you're referring to just scan through the pages skim through the pages look at the pages evaluate the pages just go over the pages that is something which is really important because tomorrow some of the ice breaking questions that i'll ask you they'll be fresh questions but they will be from history of english literature itself that i'll be focusing on okay we'll focus on that itself tomorrow uh, we are meeting what is the uh, just a second i'll just see what is the know what what is happened over here yeah i'll just tell you tomorrow so tomorrow we are right so tomorrow we we will be referring to we will be uh we will be looking at your uh your this is coming in so tomorrow we have English literary criticism. Yeah, it's literary criticism that we're looking at, but still we can always go over British history and please review your uh, your English literary criticism as well. Uh, we'll be focusing on some very important aspects and we'll, we'll be talking about them in greater detail. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Neha. That's so sweet of you. Please review that and tomorrow, uh, if somebody can probably remind me, if you can send a reminder email, I'll show you those two books that you can probably refer for chronology and they're also authentic works that you can cite because they're coming from publishers. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, everyone everyone for joining in that's really so kind and sweet of all of you i will catch up with all of you quickly uh, tomorrow and if there would be any other concerns please do let me know thank you so much take good care of yourselves god bless bye everyone see you god bless thank you thank you yes 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 thank you thank you sonu chandani aftara surbi juhi varinder prashant surbi sutapa bibu prava uh, for the YouTube, you will not be getting it. That is what I've been specifying this, uh, right? So uh, don't even keep that expectation alive. I would want, I would rather want you to, uh, you know, to write it down in the lectures itself, because uh, that will be more helpful altogether. Uh, so uh, please uh, feel free to write, make notes, take screenshots if you want to. Okay, so just definitely do that. Thank you, Siali. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take care. Enjoy your day ahead. Bye.